Hi, and welcome to Read Becca. I'm super excited to be looking forward to my next year of our fantasy bingo. This should hopefully be my fifth year completing a blackout. If you don't know, Reddit is a collection of forums known as subreddits, and each subreddit is titled r slash whatever the topic of that forum is. So in this case, it's fantasy that has expanded through the growth of the subreddit into all speculative fiction. So this is not limited only to fantasy. This includes any type of speculative uh, fiction or anything with speculative elements that you would like to talk about. So in this case, they put together a bingo board every year that runs from April to April. And this was announced on April 1st of 2021 for the new bingo board that I'm covering today. And uh, it includes 25 squares, just like your standard bingo board. You are meant to use a single book per square. You cannot reuse authors. So the goal is to get you reading widely and it does do a great job of that. Um, so one author, one square. You cannot apply that author to other squares, so no reading a whole series. Uh, you also can only do one reread, with one notable exception this year specifically, and uh, you can go for a standard bingo, which is just a row of five across, down, or diagonally, if you would like to enter for a prize. So you don't have to go for the full blackout if you like. If you do go for the full blackout, all 25 squares, then what you're going to get is just a flare on the subreddit that labels you a reading champion. So it's, you know, purely for personal pride. It doesn't get you anything but uh, that nifty flare. So what I've done is set up, uh, actually, I spent a lot of time putting together my notepad of plans. So I plan every year. And almost every year I throw that plan completely away and it does me no good, but I love the planning process. So I think today we'll, we've gone over that intro and we'll go over my plans and possibilities for the first two rows. And because this is probably gonna take a little time, um, I will add a separate video for the remaining three rows. So what I've done is focused entirely for myself on books that will fit the square prompts uh, from my own shelves. So I have primarily gone from my uh, physical TBR shelf. I have also pulled other owned books off, off my non-TBR shelf. And then I have a couple options that I've noted down that are from my own ebooks, but I don't have those to show you. So obviously I'll just note those down. So let's get into what the squares are. First off, for the bingo challenge, they have increased the difficulty each year pretty much in terms of what's available because people tend to do their own internal challenges where people are doing themed cards. Um, they might do an all women card or all LGBTQ plus. So uh, things like that that have added the challenge, the moderators realize that and have added a hard mode for each square and a hero mode for each square. So the hard mode, for instance, is going to be something like in one of these squares, we have five short stories. So the hard mode for that would be to read an entire anthology or collection. Another one of these squares is an Asian setting or an Asian inspired setting. So the hard mode for that would, to, uh, would be to make that an own voices read where you're also getting a uh, Asian author. So those are examples of that. I'm not going to go through every hard mode. You can find those in the actual bingo listing. I personally don't go for hard mode just because I like to keep it easy on myself. And, uh, and I tend to do other themes. Like I said, in this challenge, I am going for my owned works. I want to fill this out with those. Um, I've previously done an all sequels card. So um, those are ways I, I like to prompt myself instead of the, uh, the hard mode. And then hero mode is to review every single thing that you read. So after you've read a square, you post a review either on the subreddit, on Goodreads, or on Booktube. 
anywhere you like this year. So previously they wanted to get those on to the subreddit. Now they've opened it up to everywhere. So that's what bingo is all about. Let's get on to the card. So the very first square is going to be five SFF short stories. And what I like to do is just read an anthology or collection for the ease of having that all cohesive in a single unit. So I've got a couple options here. So for each of these squares, I'm going to show you some options off of my shelves, um, focusing in on what I want to read and then a couple of possibilities because I am such a mood reader. So the first option that I've got is Ted Chiang's Stories of Your Life and Others. Uh, so this is the collection that Arrival was inspired from. Um, I really like Ted Chiang's short fiction and I'm really looking forward to reading this. So this is my primary choice that is coming directly from my physical TBR shelf. Next up, I have A Thousand Beginnings and Endings uh, by Ellen O. and Elise Chapman. And I've also got The Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu. So that is for Collections and Anthologies Square. Next up, we have Square 2. Asian setting or Asian inspired setting. I have several options for this one. The Dark Forest is my primary pick. This is the second book in Cixin Liu's uh, Remembrance of Earth Past series. I absolutely adored the three body problem and I don't know why I haven't gotten back to the series so I'm really looking into to get to this one. I have Waste Tide by Chen Kui Fan. This is another Chinese translated work that I believe uh, that Ken Liu had done the translation for and just came over a couple of years ago. So I really want to read this. Um, I actually have a copy of this as a giveaway for whoever uh, I get from last year's bingo as well. So um, want to read this one for sure. And then thirdly, I have Bridge of Birds by Barry Hugart. This is kind of a classic and maybe humorous uh, work of Asian set fiction, and I've heard a lot about it, um, but I have never actually read it. So a lot of people say this is a great like palate cleanser type read. So this might be a light one to pick up. And then I have a big question mark for this one. So I have the Traveling Cat Chronicles. This has been on my physical TBR for a couple of years now, and I really want to get to it. I don't know very much about it. I don't know if it has any speculative elements. So that is the big question mark on this one. If I can use it, I might try to, um, but I know it says folkloric in the description, but I haven't heard anything about whether it's speculative. So those are my options for the Asian setting. Next up, we have the A to Z genre guide. So the moderators put together a list of specific genres uh, like dark fantasy, grim dark, classic fantasy, uh, all of that from A to Z. And then they made a selection of a few books under each of those categories that you may choose from. So I have a whole lot of books from that list. And these are meant to be things that are not the most top echelon works, um, so they're a little less known. So the first one I have that is my top priority is from my physical TBR shelf again, A Stranger in Alondria by Sophia Samatar. I have The Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich. And I have Nisi Shawl's Everfair. So those are from the A to Z genre guide. I think two of those actually came from the exploration genre. Next up, I have the found family square, square number four. So for this, from my physical TBR shelf, I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Next, I have The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. And finally, this is a question mark for me. I have The Grey Bastards. Um, and this one, so this is by uh, Jonathan French. This one is about a group of orcs 
who are basically uh, like a biker gang. So I think that would probably be a found family most likely. Um, but if anyone knows and has read this, let me know if that fits. So I do have multiple other options for that one as well. I know uh, one of the owned ebooks I have for that is the Mage Errant series by Jonathan Bierce, which is a very popular progression fantasy series. Um, it's sort of similar to your Arcane Ascension by Andrew Rowe or Cradle by Will White. Um, so I've liked those other series, so I, I really want to try that one too. So that's an ebook option that I have. And then first person POV is square number five. So I have a couple of options. I have Zero Sum Game by S.L. Huang. This one sounds really cool. It is kind of a math is magic with a badass lady protagonist. And I have Sunshine by Robin McKinley. Uh, this one is kind of dark, but slightly humorous vampires, maybe. Um, and this one, I don't really know anything about it, but Robin McKinley is an author that I have, I think, five of her books sitting on my shelves and have not ever read anything by her. So I really, really want to get to some Robin McKinley. I do have multiple things that will that will fit other squares as well. Um, and then on ebook, I actually have C.L. Polk's book, Witchmark, and I have the first book of Vlad Taltos series. And both of those should fit for first person POV as well, based on my research. So that's the first five squares. The second row, we have book club or read along. So on the subreddit, there are a whole load of book clubs. We have the moderator book club and the Goodreads book club, which are pretty much just um, any, any topic goes. Every once in a while they'll have themes, but they have a whole range of styles of books. Then there is a Feminism and Fantasy book club, there is a Classics book club, there is a Self-Published book club. Um, I think that's all of the book clubs. I'm sure I'm forgetting one though. Uh, and then read-alongs. We just finished up read-alongs for the Long Price Quartet, uh, Kate Elliott's uh, Crown of Stars. There was a Dresden Files read-along for about almost two years. So there are lots of read-alongs. Somebody is just getting ready to start a Hugo Works read-along this year. Uh, for the current Hugo shortlist. So if you are looking forward to those, jump in on those read-alongs. Um, so there's lots to choose from there and anybody can start a read-along pretty much. So you just have to talk to the mods and confirm that's okay. And then you can start a read-along on the sub. So um, I had a ton to pick from, from that, but I've actually already read my pick. So I have read Blood in the Mist and this is, this was read by the classics reading uh, club uh, a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, I think. So I have already read this and it works for that prompt. So I've filled a square. <clears throat> My other options that I would recommend to, to you for this are from the mod book club. So I've got The Conspiracy of Truths by Alexandra Rowland and The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. Uh, square seven. So this is a new to you author. It can be pretty much anyone. I have literally at the other uh, shelf set, probably at least 50 books that are all from authors I haven't read before. And like I just mentioned, I have a ton of Robin McKinley. I've got lots I can pick from. So on this list though, at the very top of my list here, I am going for books from my physical TBR. So I have the Darkening Dream by Andy Gavin, which is from my physical TBR, and I believe this one is actually vampire fantasy. And uh, this honker, The House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danluski. Um, so this is a very popular work by this author. I know he has other works, but I think this is the one everybody has read. So I really have wanted to get to this forever and I wanna finally do it this year. So this should be a great one. Uh, and then I have one other option that is not for my physical TBR. This is The Lost Puzzler by Ale Class, and it's kind of a post-apocalyptic sci-fi um, that reminds me a little bit of Waterworld. It's got the sort of child is born with the power to save everyone and, and renew everything. 
Um, but this author, the reason that I picked it up, is a professional violinist in Israel. So that really intrigued me to hear that we have this, this professional um, Israeli violinist who is at the University of Tel Aviv, writes this post-apocalyptic fiction. So really interested in that one as well. Next up, we have square number eight, Gothic fantasy. And this is the one that seems to be the trouble square for everyone this year. So number one, I have my Gothic pick, I think, going on right now. And that is Sorrowland by River Solomon. So I don't know for sure if it will fit, fit for Gothic, but it seems like it's got that atmospheric feel to it. So it may very well as it goes all along. And some people have tagged it as Gothic on Goodreads. That's a, a good way for me to check. So my other options here are Under the Pendulum Sun by Jeanette Ng. Uh, Je Jeanette Ng actually, I believe, won a Hugo for this and won a Hugo for the speech about this that she gave. So um, this is one I've had on my list since it came out and I really want to get to this. It's kind of Victorian dark fae, so really sounds interesting. And then I have The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. I have read Diane Setterfield's book Once Upon a River and really enjoyed it. It's very atmospheric and slow and I think this is going to be the same, kind of slightly spooky, and from what I've heard it's only a, a little bit speculative so this will probably be my last pick for this one, but it should fit. It's been pretty well confirmed as being uh, acceptable for this square. Uh, the ninth prompt is backlist book. So you have to read an older work for the hard mode. It's got to be before 2000, but it, if you're not going for hard mode, it, it can be any backlist work by an author and it has to be a currently active author. So um, that is the main sticking point is finding authors that are publishing and active right now, but have some older works to pick from. So I have a whole bunch for this. So. My number one option is Lois McMaster Bujold's Curse of Chalion from my physical TBR shelf. This is my most recommended book. I have to get to it, so I'm gonna do it. Um, Bujold is currently publishing uh, the Penric and Desdemona books, and I know one just was announced, so um, is a currently active author, and this is a backlist title. We've got the Daughter of the Forest by Juliet Marillier. Juliet Marillier is a current, currently active author who has uh, the Harp of Kings series, I think, or that's the first book of the series. That's a current running series trilogy. And this is an older work from the year 2000. And then um, I think this one is what might actually make it Lyriel by, by Garth Nix. So Garth Nix had the left-handed booksellers of London out last year and um, this one has made it onto my TBR, my imminent TBR, multiple, multiple times, and I have never gotten to it, and that's probably because it is a chunker. Um, so I really want to get to this. I think I'm going to get to this soon, so this may actually take the spot for, for this particular square, despite its size. And then finally, my last square I'm going to cover with you guys today is revenge. So this has to be following a character seeking revenge. And my absolute must get to pick here is The Traitor by Rue Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. Um, this is a very well-loved series on our fantasy. This follows a revenge plot between um, a basically colonized person who infiltrates the administration of the colonizer. And so it has a lot of elements of, of that colonization. And then as well, from what I understand, the protagonist is uh, in a FF relationship, um, but not a happy one. So, so um, this is very notoriously a, a sad and difficult series. So I really want to get to it anyway. Uh, my other options there are Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. And you can see right behind me, I actually have the Grim Oak 
omnibus edition of the Broken Empire series by Mark Lawrence. I don't think I'll be getting to that one, but it's an option that I have out there. Um, from what I hear, it, it is a revenge plot as well. So I think that is what I'm going to cover today. It's an awful lot of books. I have a pile all around me. We will check in later about the next three rows. Uh, link down below if you are doing a bingo TBR um, or let me know your thoughts about bingo and if you have any interest in doing it. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe.